Triple Jump War Games presented by WWE 2K23. My name is Tom Campbell and oh yeah, Ben Potter, here we go, it's wrestling time. It most certainly is a gigantic night of action in store for all of you as Alan Powerful takes on the indomitable Barbara Piss inside Hell in a Cell. Who will stand to attention? Sergeant Pachiti faces the Law of Rules boss in a 30-minute Iron Man match. And in the main event inside War Games, Jumperium take on Cult U. A huge wrestling platter for you to taste and... I'm being told that that first bite is backstage. Well, let's cross to the car park where something's going down. Well, there's your boy, Ben Potter. That's, that looks like James Jenkins. James Jenkins? Yeah, he's arriving for his number one contendership match later tonight. And oh my God. That's, is Who it, is that? It can't be. I thought he was dead. He still is. Oh, that is disgusting. It's, That's the Sander Taker. Sander Taker's in. Oh. oh. Always messed with the wrong guy. Here are friends of James Jenkins, Brian Bumpus, and Dick Mochinko. They are not happy about that. Oh, no doubt a score to be settled there. James Jenkins left laying in the car park by the Sander Taker. What's going to happen? Brian Bumpus and Dick Mychenko <sighs> thought they were in war somewhere. Well, I mean, they were there. Luckily, right place, right time. Uh, and on we go. We're going to get the show started in earnest and... Starting off with one of the great questions of wrestling. Could Hogan pick up Andre? And is this legs? Don't know. It appears to be. Certainly appears to be a lovely pair of legs. So legs is quite chatty. Yeah, you can see a lot of movement on the legs there. I think that's sort of code for... Well, I think legs is fired up. Trained famously by Levi Strauss, legs ready to to drop. I'd say I'd say drop the hammer, but probably just drop legs. Drop I guess legs, big kicks, a lot to be expected from legs in this match. I think a real coming out party for legs today. It's a huge battle royal. The winner gets the War Games advantage for their respective brand. Triple jumps, legs entering first as we await the second entrance into the War Games Battle Royal. Oh, wow. Well, we've seen... From England, weighing in at 157 pounds, the outsider, Owen The insider. He's representing up. Editor World Order. Lots, lots of, lots of promise in this young man, in Owen Mawson. Fighting from the mean streets of Liverpool. It's been a good year for Liverpool winning Eurovision. Imagine what it would do for the pool if Owen Mawson can win the Battle Royal, Ben Butter. Mm, well, he is representing Cultaholic, and of course, he will want to bring home, as you said, that very important advantage for later in the night. Uh, I just want to sort of ask him where he got his boa from, though. It is a fabulous boa. It looks amazing. I, be I believe uh, it's, it's, it's certainly a store in Liverpool that he picked that one up from. Representing the editor, World Order, Owen Mawson, the first cultaholic entrance in this multi-brand battle royal. You throw your opponent over the top to send them packing. The last one standing picks up a huge advantage in our main event, Ben Potter. I I'm not one to show, show bias, mm -hmm. but I am pulling for the Cultaholic boys. Well, naturally, I'm pulling for Triple Jump. There is equal representation in this Battle Royal from bro both brands, sorry. So hopefully, it will be as fair a contest as possible. I hope it's unfair and violent and angry. Well, that's that's fair as well, that's I suppose. That's also fair. That's fair too. <laughs> Priding in the fairness. Look at the physique of Owen there. Oh, speaking of physiques. I know that music. I know that music anywhere. Billy Ray. Yeah, I probably could have been a lot better parent. I, at some point along the line, you know, maybe I should have taken a belt off to one of my kids, oh my but I never could whip my kids. Here's what the truth is. I'm a very imperfect person. I've made a lot of mistakes, 
and I failed way more times than I succeeded. Does he know the well, camera's you know, on? No, he's he's still, 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 still going. Thomas Edison said the most important ingredient for success is failure. That's the key to finding your yeah. dreams. It's about we, persistence. I, like I just never give up. I don't want to stop it. Yeah, me too. To find out what's going to work. Okay, I think he's done. I think he's done. Now, he's a chatty soul from your side. He certainly is. I mean, you look at the... I was talking about the physique of Owen. Look at the physique of Billy Ray here. He's been putting in the time in the gym, I think. He's going to be a difficult individual to eliminate. Imagine how long he'll talk if he doesn't win this. Well, he's got a guitar. I just hope he doesn't have to use it, you know? He's going to be playing the blues on many members of the Cultaholic Extended Multiverse in this battle royal. Billy Ray Warus. Repping the Warus clan. Enters the ring and that is Good the chest hair. Oh, coming oh, to take a bite out of the Battle Royal! Who's this, Tom? Oh, there can be but one! Master of the Deep! And he's about to master the deep! From Birmingham, England, weighing in at 290 pounds, the unpredictable Barry, the Shark. Beautiful. A Battle Royale with cheese for War Games Advantage? I couldn't give a hoot about Cultaholic. I'll take them all down like Hulk Hogan did to Gawker. I couldn't give a damn about Triple Jump Gaming Peak to Tetris anyway. When I get in that royal battle, everybody is getting royally choppy choppy chop chopped by Barry T. Shark, you turkey. Wow. Strong words. Barry the Shark, an island unto himself, it would seem. From Birmingham as well. Beautiful shoreline in Birmingham. Plenty of sharks in landlocked West Midlands, I'll have loads you know. Loads of sharks. Yeah, absolutely. Look at those frightening eyes. Those He's pointing at them. They say the eyes are a window on the soul. You could make a fish pun there. You could. I'm going to be the better person or not. Barry the shark enters the battle royal. A walrus, a shark, legs, mm -hmm. and a liver puddlian. What else could come out? <laughs> it's a combo. It's a hot combo. Oh, oh, what else indeed? Oh, I think we might have already seen him earlier tonight coming to the defense of James Jenkins. Here he is. Are you familiar with Brian Bumpus's work? Uh, I think you should entertain Cultaholic on the lore of Brian Bumpus, Ben Potter. Well, I certainly will. Essentially, he's a newsreader. Uh, he takes his job extremely seriously. He will bring you all of the headlines, and he's most known perhaps for being partnered with another participant in this battle royal uh, who sort of commits the crimes, and then Brian will report on them. Scandal in the newsroom. Brian Bumpus looking to make headlines of his own tonight. If he wins this battle royal for triple jump, mm. could we see Brian Bumpus and Dick Mychinko maybe at odds well, during this match? It is every everything for themselves. It's not even something I want to think about, to be honest. Speaking of things. And from England, weighing in at 206 pounds, it's Kid Fu. The hardest working man in showbiz enters the battle royal the king of style full stop he certainly is the man that owns more pairs of trainers than he's had hot dinners mm. and he loves a hot dinner jack ag the, the the man formerly known as yes. jack atkins yes at kinsuke nakamura one half of the cultaholic classic raw review well-known egg fancier and writer for cultaholic.com and our YouTube channel. Tonight, he's not writing about other wrestlers. He's writing about himself mm -hmm. and the success in the Battle Royal, if all goes well. He most certainly is. Also, I've seen him do this specific maneuver in the office several times. Yeah, you put his back back in after, bless you. Here we go. He's going to do it. Oh! Incredible. A man of his age, it is dangerous to do that without a chiropractor on standby. At Kinsuke Nakamura, another Liverpudlian entering the fray. That's very true. It could Does be, that mean anything? Uh, there could be a fight on the Mersey at this race. Uh, an yes. Albert Dock showdown between at Kinsuke Nakamura and Owen Mawson. Well, by my count, we've got two more participants still to come. The ring is filling with a sea of humanity, the likes of which we haven't seen since, I don't know, maybe a convention. Oh, blimey. It's the same music as before. Oh, here he comes. So 
this is Dick Mychinko. He's the other half of Truth and Consequences, the tag team with Brian Bumpus. He's, uh, he's a bit of a violent fella. I'll put it that way. When they write the book on the most violent people on planet Earth, Dick Mychinko will be on the cover. Mm. He's actually already had several books written about him. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I've owned three of them. Have you? One of them spontaneously combusted. That's how dangerous this man is. Which was your favorite, Tom? Uh, the one that spontaneously combusted. Right. Do you remember what it was called, Tom? Uh, please don't read this book. It will spontaneously combust. That does sound like a book that Dick Machinko would write. You can see the fear in the eyes of other competitors from both Cultaholic and Triple Jump. Now yeah. the Dick Mychinko's house arrest is up. Like a caged animal. Nobody is safe even on the Triple Jump side. It's a dangerous place to be, just sort of in this arena, full stop. Whilst I know that if he wins this battle royal, it's advantage Triple Jump. Can't say he cares that much for who wins the advantage. He just wants to hurt people. He's there to hurt people. If I were Billy Ray Walrus, I'd be writing a, a very sad rock song at some point about all of this. And the final competitor. And their opponent from Newcastle upon Tyne, England, weighing in at 219 pounds. Young boy, Jack, Jack, Jackson. Well, you know what? Oh, but Jack here, the brains behind Cultaholic. Ah, I'm so nervous about this battle royal that where the winner gets the advantage in the War Games match. I'm so nervous about, oh, about the absolute hiding I'm going to give the lot of them. The work your tickets and toil them of triple jump. They won't know what hit them. Well, I tell you what, nothing more dangerous than a man looking to hand your ass to you than a man who's had a hand up his ass half his life. Crikey, absolutely. He's also sort of terrifying to look at. That is the stuff that will live in my nightmares. There's going to be a sort of intimidation factor as well from Puppet Jack here, surely. And you can tell there is a lot of concerning characters who are entering this battle royal and we are getting underway. Here we go, Ben Potter. Blimey, everyone just picking a dance partner. It looks like a couple of triple jump members have squared off against each other. And also you see Barry the Shark and Owen going at it, but Dick's interrupting now. Dick Mychinko, no friends for Dick in this one. Battering Barry the Shark and Oh, is it is it legs hitting Brian Bumpus? It, it appears to be legs. I can't. Hang on. Is this? It is legs. That is legs. Yes. A battle of the animal kingdom in the centre of the ring. Billy oh. Ray Walrus, spinebuster to Barry the Shark. The action is thick and fast, and it's quite difficult to keep track of what's actually going on here. But it appears Owen is trying to eliminate. Oh, someone's just gone. At Kinsuke Nakamura, we hardly knew the first victim for Billy Ray Walrus there. Owen trying to eliminate Dick as well, get an early elimination, get the big guy out of the match, and... Oh! Oh! What a maneuver, so Barry the Shark sends Dick Mychenko to the showers, and Owen sends Barry back to the ocean! I thought these guys were meant to be on the same team. Everything and anything goes that we really should have had a team meeting before this. Probably. Yeah. I know we did on triple jump, but it doesn't matter. At the very least, a call on slack. Nothing. They all just got chucked in there and just cracked oh, on. Oh, look at the leg-based offense of legs. I taking would... a big run up. Oh, and interrupted by Owen. Owen putting the stopper on the legs. I'd worry if his legs offense, if legs leg offense wasn't that strong, because that's pretty much the only the only roll of the dice they're having. Well, I don't know about you, but all I can see is a pair of legs. So anything that happens is is purely leg based. Bumpus hanging in there. It's longer than Dick Mychenko. Oh. Beautiful springboard by Bumpus. Has he been training for this? I think so. Good showing by Bumpus. Dick will obviously be very disappointed, but uh, they've got bigger things to worry about. What with the attack on James Jenkins, these two probably have a lot on their mind. Speaking of those bigger things, and speaking of that attack, we are getting word from the Cultaholic Triple Jump War Games general manager that we will see Brian Bumpus and Dick Mychenko back out here later on. They're going to face the Sander Taker in a handicap match. Whoa! And oh! 
Bumpus getting a chance to, to get a breather before yeah. that huge match that goes down later, Ben. I was going to say, just as soon as you've got news to report, there goes the news reporter. But yes, you're right. The two will try to take on the Sandertaker later on to get some retribution for their fallen comrade, James Jenkins. Handicap shenanigans later tonight here at Coltaholic and, Cult and Triple Jump War Games as Billy Ray Warris and Legs dominate the Coltaholic contingent of Owen Mawson and Puppet Jack. Two members of each team remaining. Billy is dangling by a thread and he's gone. The achy, breaky heart. Billy Ray Warris sent to the ground by oh. the EWO's leading, leading general. The legs-based offense is not letting up at all. Puppet Jack, Owen oh. Mawson and legs left. And Owen, Owen, weird strategy by Owen Mawson to attack Puppet Jack. You'd think you've got an opportunity. To, to handicap the legs. Absolutely. You would have thought that they would want to get rid of legs and then maybe they could have a gentleman's agreement about who steps over the top rope, you know? No gentleman's agreement being had here as legs puts a beating on Puppet Jack. Look at doing a big sidewalk slam potentially. Oh no, a backbreaker. How they're doing this as He's just a pair of legs defies expectation. Oh. Legs is not done, legs is now done. Owen Mawson maybe helping Puppet Jack back his feet. Maybe that gentleman's agreement that you spoke of, Ben Potter. Whoa. No! Quite the opposite! Oh my goodness me. Owen has eliminated Puppet Jack and now there are two. It is the leader of the editor world order versus a creature whose upper torso was edited out. Oh. Is this Legs' moment? Oh, wow! Beautiful leg-based offense again from Legs, who now tries to eliminate Owen in the corner. Calfzilla looking to send Owen Mawson to the back. The power of the of whatever's above legs there. Yeah, the mental capacity. Where is the brain on legs, do you think? Oh, I reckon the calf. It's the biggest the, bit, Tom. The th it's the hardest part of the legs. It is. That's where you keep your big brain energy. Oh! Jumping knee strike fails to take down legs. Oh. And again, the clothesline, legs still on their legs. Imagine the humiliation if Owen Mawson eliminates legs with his own legs. Oh, that would be very embarrassing. But now another attempt at elimination by legs. It's got Owen up. Oh, the power of legs here. Mind combined powers to oh. Owen. One of these two representing their respective brands will win War Games advantage for either Cult U or Jumperium in our, in our main event. Huge stakes. And these two know it. You can see it in Legs' face. You can tell the stakes by the gams of Legs, who gets knocked down by Owen Mawson. Oh, the knee strike this time takes Legs off his legs. Oh, could this be Owen Mawson's opportunity? But no! Legs quick to retaliate! Oh, oh what's this? Oh, my goodness me. Better men have died in that watermelon crushing grip of Legs. The thigh high driver from Legs. Thigh high driven oh. was Owen Morrison. And again, the knees of Owen Morrison. Oh, and the kip up from Legs. How did Legs get up that quick? Oh, I think, no. Owen Morrison dropping the leg across, I don't know, somewhere above where Legs' legs are. I feel like this, this should fall, cause some sort of rip in space time continuum. Legs getting a leg drop. There's no way Owen Morrison can reach from there. This is an extremely dangerous game. Why would he go up there? The pomp and arrogance of Liverpool's second favourite son. Oh, a stiff breeze could have knocked him off, but he's back down in the ring now. Legs. I think Legs thought this might be a breeze, and it certainly hasn't been. Owen Mawson could be one big move away from getting the War Games advantage for Cultaholic. And oh, no, Legs was groggy there for a moment. I think that was Owen's opportunity. And I think that was Legs' opportunity as well, but instead deciding to deal more damage. There's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. Owen Mawson walked it there and it didn't oh, end well. Oh, here we well. go again, it's the thigh-high driver. Crushing blow to Owen Mawson's watermelon-like head. And Mawson is stunned. Can he answer? What is Legs doing? Oh, into the corner, but right off the ring. The power game of Legs. Amounting for at least one whole body's worth of power mm. in those two pins. Oh. As now Owen Mawson on the receiving end. Could it be a power bomb? How's he doing this? How's he suspending him like that above his legs? What's going on? Mawson just being chucked around in the air like a child by some invisible force. Legs defying gravity. Ow! Oh, Mawson's out. 
Legs has done it. Advantage Jumperium in the War Games match in the main event. Is this Legs? Is this a winner? It certainly looks like it. We've panned up to nothing. There are the legs. I see the legs now. War Games advantage for Triple Jump. Let's go backstage and get some words ahead of his showdown with Barbara Piss from Mr. Powerful, Alan Powerful. Mr. Powerful, Alan Powerful, trained in the fires of wrestling school by the great David Lockett, forged in metal by the greater Jerry Sweat. And when it comes down to Cultaholic versus Team Triple Jump, I don't know who my opponent is, but I will leave no stone unturned, no lead unleaded, until everybody is wiped out. Class in session, kids. You're all going to school. And when I... Oh, this will be the unlucky opponent and... Barbara Piss! Oh, f well, it seems like that was a shock for Mr. Powerful, Alan Powerful. He's stepping in there with Babs. A huge amount of confidence shown by Alan until he learned who he was facing. And here she comes, the big piss monster herself. Look at the physique of Barbara Piss. Chiseled out of something stronger than granite. One of the most dangerous forces in Triple Jump Stream history. A multi-time World Heavyweight Champion. An elder in Elder Ring. Destroyed multiple video game landscapes in her wake. Barbara Piss may be the most powerful force of nature in all of combat sports. Everywhere she goes, whoever she comes across is in serious trouble. So I do feel for Alan tonight, but uh, perhaps maybe he needs to have a word with his agent and work out who he's facing ahead of time. Upset for Alan Powerful, who, who was a, who, this was a surprise opponent for, despite the fact that you know, we all got the run sheet months ago. We did. It's a shame he can't read. That's Might just play what, a factor. It's the cost of being so powerful, I suppose. All the time. Oh, oh. Barbara's already in there. What's she doing? Barbara stalking Mr. Powerful Alan Powerful. The head games of Barbara Piss knows no bounds, and also she probably doesn't really know the rules and also can't read. Barbara Piss cannot. The, the power of Barbara Piss cannot be understated. No. One time wiped out so many people in one colony that the oxygen level dropped. The oxygen. Think on that. I will. Think I, on that. I, I flip him. Will you know Barb? You know Ben Potter. You know Barbara Piss better than anybody I do. on this planet. Bless you. I am a close personal friend of, of Barbara Piss. I will say, say that she she means well and she is very lovely when you get to know her. But obviously, she's extremely intimidating. Uh, she's not highly educated. She's difficult to communicate with, and sometimes that can be frustrating for her. And she will take it out with her fists, with her immense muscles. And just like we're seeing now, Alan Powerful taken down with a big elbow. She can just sort of do whatever she wants. Alan Powerful has uh, quite the job on his hands here against uh, the sometimes misunderstood, always overbearing Barbara Piss. Mm. And look at the, as if he's a child. And Alan Powerful's no small oh. man. I watched him eat an entire Kit Kat in one bite. No. Yeah, it was disgusting. That sounds horrible. I'm, so, I'm team Barbara now. I think we're all team Barbara for this oh. one. As Barbara Piss with the power of a thousand oh. gods. Bloody hell. Inside of hell in a cell. No rules, no problem. One pinfall to decide this one. No escaping for Alan Powerful either, Ben Potter. No, he is locked in there with Barbara. It's like that bit from that Spider-Man film. It is just but like with that with Barbara bit. Piss instead. It is just like that bit from that Spider-Man film. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the costumes that we're seeing here. The colours. Oh, that's a bad miss. No water in the pool. 
Well, Barbara Piss, as we all know, uh, has a very special tailor that she goes to see. Yes. Uh, they, they fell an entire forest in order to make ethical, ethically sourced ring attire for Barbara Piss. Under threat of death, of course. Obviously, you know, but she's very sweet about it. Yes, she is. Highly ethical, though. And when we talk about ethical, we see the table in the ring there. As we say, oh. it's no disqualification inside of Hell in a Cell. And Barbara Piss may use that table for a bake sale. She may use it for wanted destruction. I, I, I kind of know where my head's leading, Ben Potter. Well, I think, honestly, she deserves a round of applause for actually putting the table up in the first place. Usually she just hits people with it. The fact that she's worked out how to unfold the legs and secure them safely is, is a really big step for her, and I'm very proud. Some learn, some hire help. I think Barbara is maybe the latter. I think that's kind of how it goes with Barbara Piss. I say higher, threaten. Yeah, threatened, exactly. Mr. Powerful, Alan Powerful, a debut outing, one that he won't forget anytime soon as Barbara oh, Piss. The backbreaker. That's not going to be good for Alan. Snap in the back of Alan Powerful. Barbara Piss now having a quick... Showing off some cardio. Quick bit of cardio. This is the thing, though, if you if you are uh, familiar with the, the biography, the twisted history of Barbara Piss, uh, she has been part of wrestling's landscape for many, many years. She has, at uh, least three. I think that this is probably the fastest she's ever been. Oh, very close to the table there. Alan Powerful nearly taking an opportunity to put Barbara Piss straight through that table. Barbara Piss says no. One thing about Barbara is that she's uh, she's strong-willed and she can sometimes be a bit stubborn in that all she really needs to do is, is trip up once and Alan Powerful oh. can find an opportunity, but not this time. That table was not stubborn as Mr. Powerful, Alan Powerful's body oh, goes crashing through it. she's not done. Just, just hoisting him up like a baby and slamming him back down. We're ringside, Ben, for this epic encounter, and I don't think the size of Barbara Piss is done justice through a 1080p YouTube window. No, I have some stats for you. 6'11 is how tall she is. 6'11. 6'11, approximately 473 pounds. Well, that's that. She's trimmed down a bit for this one then. She has, yeah. She's cut a lot of weight. There um, was an error on my run sheet. It said 11.6. I didn't for once question it. Well, that's the thing with Barbara. You never know until you're really in there. Alan, I don't know. Has he written a will? Do you know? Uh, I, I, I think he knows someone called Will. I think that's as good as it gets. Okay, well, he's going to have to call But he has promised them. me his train set should this all go Pete Tong. Right, so whose side are you on then? Well, Barbara's. I really like his train set. Okay, it sounds pretty cool to be fair i know right Does he have the little trees and stuff he's got at least oh, three huge trees right hands from alan he's not giving you those trees if he keeps landing right hands like that alan powerful swing oh. and barbara piss he's giving it socks oh barbara huge swing and a miss and right over the top goes barbara there's no way he can pick up barbara piss there's no way oh spine buster beautiful onto the broken bit of temp oh but barbara's right back up again powerful Look at that. by name powerful by surname oh Alan didn't have enough time to react to that, and he takes a huge tumble. Into the bits of table, carnage personified. Barbara Piss sizing up. Oh, stunner. That's a that's what she calls a piss-warm stunner. A piss-warm piss stunner. A piss-warm stunner from Barbara Piss. And oh, Alan just getting Not enough piss up. in the pool for the piss-warm stunner. No, not quite as somehow Alan Powerful somehow has been inside this cage with Barbara Piss and he's not dead or pregnant. He is still going. But he has turned his back. You never turn your, your back on a Barbara. We know this. Oh, just tossing him up in the air. As the Wu-Tang Clan once said, you don't turn your back on a Barbara, you might end up in a body bag. Very close again. It's a two count only. If I were Mr. Powerful Alan Powerful, judging by the way this is going, mm. I'd just sort of, I'd lie there. I'd just lie there. Pretend to be dead. I think that's the best thing to do. Just pretend you're dead and she, she might only ravage you as opposed to just leaving. It's entirely, well, it's a huge risk to take. That's the thing. And also with Barbara, she's got a huge arsenal of very dangerous maneuvers. What is Alan doing? Alan Why does was, Alan keep turning his back on... Oh, I think uh -oh. he was trying to show Barbara his huge arsenal. Uh-oh, I think Barbara might be setting up for something here. I've seen this a thousand times, assuming that she can get Alan Powerful to his feet and get him in the corner. She may be setting up for a jinkle jam. A jinkle jam. I dread, I dread to think what the jinkle jam may entail, Ben Potter. Oh my goodness, I think it's happening. Oh, she's got him. One leg goes on that rope. One leg goes on that rope. She takes a good whiff of, of lovely wrestling air. Oh, oh, and right 
right oh. in his downstairs zone, but that's not it. Well, it's, a, it's a good job that Mr. Pavel, Alan Pavel, isn't attractive enough to anyone want to have kids with him. Well, I think he's gorgeous, to be fair. It's the wet nap! Oh, all of that body weight, the 377, 6, 6, 7, 5, uh, two, 3, oh, nearly 400 pounds of body weight down onto Alan Pavel, and Alan is done. It's a wet nap and a long kiss goodnight for Barbara Piss. Dominating performance from the Big Piss monster there. And uh, is she going to behave herself? Sometimes she goes after referees in this instance because she doesn't want to stop fighting. She's going for it again. Someone's going to need to come out with maybe a taser, perhaps. She's a fighter, not a fighter. Barbara Piss, let's take it backstage where our cameras are standing by. At ease, soldier, it's Sergeant Pachiti. Attain hot general rules, boss! You slime! You puke! You maggot! Challenging me is something you're gonna regret! This arena will be the battleground where we go face to face in a 30 minute Iron Man match! There are a lot of privates out there who have tried to take me down, and none of them are serving anymore, and you, rules boss, will be no different. I'm gonna tear you limb from limb, and when I get done with you, not even your colleagues will recognize you. I will fly the flag of Cultaholic. I will sing the national anthem of Cultaholic. I will emerge victorious for Cultaholic and send you back to the trenches where you belong. And that is an order. Hello. Oh, just out of time there. Just out of time for Rules Boss to get his words in. Maybe he didn't quite understand what he needed to do. That is a recurring issue with Mr. Boss. He's, uh, he's a character. Are you familiar with him? Here he comes. Well, the rules, boss, uh, we're familiar with... Oh, oh wait a hang minute. on a second. Well, rules, boss, not making the rules tonight. Here comes Sergeant Pachiti. He's completely oblivious. He's still dancing his way down to the ring. Sergeant Pachiti not really taking advantage of this opportunity at all. Oh, and now he spotted him. Oh, rules, boss, completely caught off guard. As if Pachiti were a ringing phone. Sergeant Pachiti overpowers Rules Boss. Here, oh. here are the rules for Rules Boss, Ben Potter. What a twist. We get to give Rules Boss the rules here. We certainly do. It's a 30-minute Iron Man match. Pinfalls, submissions, decisions, as many as you can in 30 minutes. Whoever's got the most at the end wins. Yes, regardless, this match will go for 30 minutes, even though it has started a little prematurely. You can see the timer counting down already. Rules Boss hasn't even been able to get out of his ceremonial European Commission of Challenges cape, which he so proudly wore to the ring. Will the European Commission of Challenges be upset by this? Uh, I don't think they'll hear about it for at least three to four months, as is their nature. Okay, by that point, it might have blown over. Well, exactly, or it's too late to do anything anyway, so. WWE 2K23 presenting Cultaholic versus Triple Jump War Games. Still to come, that huge War Games match. It's going to be Jumperium versus Cult U in our main event, with the advantage going to Triple Jump. And right now, the advantage seems to belong to Rules Boss, Ben. Certainly, although uh, Sergeant Pachiti did start things rather... Well, he was breaking all of the rules. It does seem that Rules Boss is getting the upper hand at the moment. He's all over Sergeant Pachiti. Do you have a, anything to tell me about Sergeant Pachiti? Do you have his rap sheet? And it looks like the match is officially going to get underway now. Perhaps Rules Boss can remove 
that cape he's so fond of. Well, Sergeant Pachiti, anyone who follows the Cultaholic Twitch stream will know makes an appearance where something off color tends to appear on the screen. He tends to keep us right, mm -hmm. keep us bright, keep us from being uh, demonetized or right. Yes. And pri tonight, private, tonight, it's not about the private parts on show. No. It's about the private parts of Rules Boss being crushed by Sergeant Pachiti. This is going to be a hugely technical encounter, I feel. Look at these two just going hold for hold. Nobody getting the upper hand here so far. Rules Boss, although he is usually extremely delayed when you reach out to him via traditional correspondence here, he knows exactly what's going on. It is the battle of the man that makes the rules and the man that breaks the rules. A 30-minute Iron Man match for the ages is underway. Here at Coltaholic versus Triple Jump War Games. Great strategy by Rules Boss here. Just gives himself a little beat yep. just, to, uh, just to check the phone's not ringing. It's been all go. Oh, oh he completely misses there. It was a, that's a bad miss. It is a really bad miss. And Ooh. now Sergeant Pachiti with that shoulder block taking down Rules Boss. Still to come tonight, as we say, not along with that War Games encounter. Uh, as we discovered during our opening match, Ben Potter, we're going to mm. see Brian Bumpus and Dick Mychinko back out here. They're facing the Samdertaker in a handicap match. They are. Now, I don't really feel like anyone in that match is in for a good time. However, I do applaud Dick and Brian for standing up for their friend James Jenkins, who was so cruelly attacked in the car park making his way out here tonight to have a match of his own, and now he can't. Well, he can update you that James Jenkins has been taken to a local medical facility uh, where he is being assessed for possibly a broken toenail. Oh, blimey. Well, he won't be able to edit for weeks then. Triple Jumper really screwed. He is one for finding a way to get out of editing, is James Jenkins, and a broken toenail will do just that. As rules boss breaks the rules once again, jumping on the back of Sergeant Pachiti. Yeah, just scraping the face and oh, ducks under and look at that beautiful release German suplex there from Rules Boss. Amazing that his hat is able to stay on. Heavy is the head that wears the, the oh, is it a crown? There's some sort of, oh, he was going for some kind of bear hug here. I have heard that Rules Boss is actually very proficient with his submission uh, uh, tactics. But, and, how, but how, uh, how appropriate that Rules Boss as you see Ooh. here, go for oh, an here we go. Yeah, Another submission. Oh, look at it, it's an armbar oh, leg lock combo. Really close. Sergeant pachiti has been in this position a few times though. Look, look at him, he's, he is. he's powering out of there, but Rules Boss decides instead to let him go. He is no stranger to shame, is Sergeant Pachiti, as here comes Rules Boss once again now. Oh. Submission being broken, right. and he's going to wait to wear, wear on that armor, Sergeant Pachiti. The Absolutely. saluting arm. Yes, well, that's the thing about Sergeant Pachiti. He does love to salute, and if you can take that away, that's a big psychological advantage for Rules Boss. It certainly is, and one that... Oh, wait a oh, minute! Oh, blimey, what's going on here? All the way All up. the power! Military press into a power slam oh. by Sergeant Pachiti! Oh. It's nil-nil still, to quote the commentator from Pro Evolution Soccer on the PlayStation 1. Absolutely. One of my favourite commentators from he... one of my favourite games. <laughs> and there's the submission once again, that arm and leg lock. He's, he's known for wearing people down, rules boss. In life? In li just generally in life. And it's, it's good to see that those skills extend to the squared circle as well. It makes a lot of sense, actually. If, what do you think the strategy should be for rules boss against Sergeant Pachiti? Well, I think Sergeant Pachiti, given the size advantage, brings a lot of strength and power. He's going to hit a lot of hard-hitting moves, case in point, right here. Oh, a big DDT counter. He's got to try and counter whenever he can, stay away from those power moves, and lock in those submissions. Tap out the big man. I don't think he's going to hit a lot of pinfalls necessarily. The rules boss needs to make those rules very quickly as Hick. Oh, oh, blimey, right on his head. Phenomenal pile driver. And a rope break. I think the ref needs to have a closer look at that, actually. The toes did not appear to be under the ropes. The irony of rules boss being hoistened by the rules oh. and his own petard. Oh, and now comes Sergeant Pachiti. Pachiti now on the fight back. Shoulder tackle by Sarge. But rules boss just a little bit quicker. As long as he can get those strikes in first, that combination offense is taking down Sergeant Pachiti. 
with surprising efficiency, not that time. A lot of pressure on Sergeant Petit in this match as well, because we've seen uh, Legs come out as the winner of the Battle Royal. Mm. Surprising, considering he is basically the only body part that has to lose in a Battle Royal. Well, exactly. He survived the whole darn thing. You would have thought he would weigh at least half of what everybody else did out there and would have been the easiest person to eliminate. Pers and yet, Perseverance. Using, using psychic brain powers, was able to eliminate... Owen Mawson right at the end and secure the advantage for Jumperium in no, the main event. No. What is happening out oh, here? Look at this. Are we thinking last oh, ride? Oh my goodness. And not only that, but Barbara Piss basically turning Mr. Powerful Alan Powerful into a puddle of piss. Yes, absolutely. So it's 2 0 to triple jump. It is. And if uh, Rules Boss. It's not looking particularly good for him right now. That's a very good tactic. He knows what the rules are. He's going to try and get a count out point. Typical rules boss if utilizing the rules. Exactly. As he is known to do, a real stickler. But if rules boss is able to pull out the victory here, that means triple jump are guaranteed a tie regardless of how the rest of the matches go. And that's a good position to be in. Baffled by Sergeant Pachisi's decision to hot dog and grandstand as opposed to getting back into the ring. Oh, that's a bad miss. But the count has been reset. Rules boss now knows that Sergeant Pachiti is waiting for him. What's he going to do? Mind games here between these two as Pachiti. Oh, but it looks like. Yeah, yeah, Rules boss saw it coming. Rules boss with the arm. Sergeant Pachiti saw it coming. Oh, and Rules boss taking down that time. Ooh. Round and round these two go. Ben so evenly matched. Absolutely. We're nearly 10 minutes into this match, not a single fall. So far, oh, and again, the power, oh, and the DDT. These guys know each other surprisingly well, having never interacted before today. Do you think there might have been like a crossover at some point? Maybe they went to college together or, you know. It's entirely they possible. They shared, shared a cigarette at a nightclub. Maybe, maybe they had a chat in the toilet at some point. I don't know. I think they get on quite well. Oh, the eye rake. Referee not doing a thing about that. And again, Sergeant Pachiti going for this power move. Oh, but it's super effective and Rules Boss is flat on his back. Rules Boss. Oh, just barely getting that shoulder up. Pachiti goes again. Why goes not? Again. Wear him down. Didn't look like he had a lot in him there. And the first fall goes to Sergeant Pachiti. Excellent strategy by Sergeant Pachiti. And now looking for a very quick second fall. Oh. Powerbomb from the heavens! Drops the elbow. What's Sergeant Pachisi setting up for here? It's going to be bad, I have a feeling. Oh, the, oh. that Lariat, the power game certainly belongs to Sergeant Pachisi. After an initial back and forth, as soon as that fall landed, it's been all Sergeant Pachiti. Rules Boss has had zero answers for him, which he doesn't normally, to be fair, when on the phone. But in this case, he really does need to find an answer very soon. He certainly does. As, Plach as uh, Pachiti's platoon, you hear in the crowd there enjoying the hot dogging and grandstanding. And oh! the Rules Nation enjoying it oh, too. Oh, blimey. A total miscalculation by Rules. Boss there, he takes a massive boot to the face. And that is really rough stuff. That's knocked him clean out. A size oh. nine gets a three. And Sergeant Pachiti's now two falls up, Ben. Blimey, and again, look at this. The power offense into the power slam. And Rules Boss is out. He's going for another cover. I don't know, is Rules Boss even going to be able to do anything about this? He lets oh. him up. A warning. A, a screaming instructions like Sergeant Pachiti's drill sergeant when he was growing up, who made him run 40 miles through the woods naked Captain, to test him. Captain Pachiti. Captain Pachiti, as he's better known. He was bullied mercilessly by his drill instructor, and that's made him the beast that he is today that stops us sometimes seeing a pecker on an episode of Homes Under the Hammer. God bless. Some foul intentions here. Now they've stripped off that announce table. It's not no disqualification, but the referee does have some leeway. Ironically, that's going to upset rules, boss. It certainly does. You can see it in his face already. He is furious about this, but he has managed to counter for the first time in a while. Sergeant Pachiti, and it looks like rules boss is maybe going to have a go. 
The story of Rules Boss is one that has been told on Triple Jump's channel for a long time now. You, you pick up the phone to Rules Boss, he eventually picks up the phone to you, and he changes the game, mm. quite literally. He does. He does. What is one of the most unorthodox challenges that Rules Boss has set Triple Jump? Well, Rules Boss once asked us to wave uh, some fire. Oh! oh! Wave some fire in front of the face of the person who was playing a game about putting out fires. Highly unorthodox and very dangerous. Speaking of dangerous, that powerbomb onto the announce table. Is he going to take... He's taking the count out. He knows the rules. Rules boss using the rules to get the win. That is poetic, quite frankly. Oh, and hang on, Tom. I'm receiving word that this match, even though it's in progress, has received a five-star rating on the internet from our journalist. Wow. We'd like to thank David for giving it said five stars. Yes. Some say it would have been three stars had it been held in the Tokyo Dome. You know, oh, hang on, Tom, you just missed it. On oh, a tap out! He just tapped him out immediately. That was, there wasn't even a, a second for Sergeant Pachichi to escape there. Oh, look at the strat again, a oh, submission! Oh, he's locking in another submission right off the bat. This is what I thought Rules Boss would have to do today. Use that oh. superior technique and he has leveled it. No, he's gone up. He's 3-2 up. And rules like Sergeant Pachiti's arm are made to be broken. Oh, the confidence now is back. Rules boss ahead for the first time this match. But it looks like Sergeant Pachiti's going to show off that you, power. You're not going to have as much energy behind that after, after several submission holds. No, look at that. Wow. The swagger from Sergeant Pachiti there, taking Rules Boss down. Cast your mind back, Ben Potter. We've talked about Rules Boss encouraging pyromania yes. through triple jump. What other elements of disaster have you seen play out? Well, normally, quite frankly, Tom, it's almost bureaucratic incompetence, really, that, that's the real, oh, no. Oh, no bureaucratic oh, incompetence there, just no, sheer power! Just no answer whatsoever, which in and of itself is actually the kind of bureaucratic incompetence that we usually encounter with Rules Boss. I think Sergeant Pachiti knows exactly what he's done. He's kicked him right in the face. It would appear to me, Tom, that those feet are under the rope at the bottom there, but the referee seemingly... Well, that is one for the council, that. I think, to, to investigate in, in three to six months when they finally get around to watching this. Absolutely. The after European, their very long lunch break. The European Commission of Challenges, ECOC, as they're better known. Not going to be happy with this, but look at that. I think that went right in Pachiti's ECOC, I'll be honest. Oh, and what's happening now? Oh, boot to the face. What's Rules Boss going to... Oh, is he going to try and level this up again? He's locked in another submission. Oh, it's a, it's a common or garden face lock, oh, and he's done he's the job. he's got jump. it again. We are seeing falls thick and fast here. Finally, Pachiti falling asunder to Rules Boss. Finally, Rules Boss has an answer, and he's not one for answering normally. No. It looks like he's going for a special maneuver here, and... Oh, Pachiti does with an answer, and he busts open Rules Boss. Oh, the blood cascading. He's going to have to phone home to ask about what kind of plasters he's allowed to use. Oh, and that's just elementary, isn't it? It doesn't even look like Rules Boss was trying to kick out at that point. There's no point of plaster on that. Another victory for Sergeant Pachiti. Oh. Oh. He's scrambled back into this one. Has Sarge five to four now. Rules Boss is spent. Absolutely exhausted, but he gets out of the way. That's a bad miss. Just had enough energy left to do that forward roll to get out oh, of the way. The jumping knee strike. And Pachiti has, has found a second wind here. Took several submissions. Oh, oh that, it's that move again. That big boot again. Sergeant Boot Cheaty. That das boot from Sergeant Pachiti that has seen, that has seen some awful trenches and foxholes. Yes. And now sees the face of Rules Boss. Oh, again. Boots two faces. I have to. Oh, I have to to give it to Rules Boss. That that headwear has stayed put. It has. I'm not entirely convinced. It's not part of his skeleton. Really? I think he's just coloured it in. So it's like conehead style. Possibly. Energy. I don't know. We're going to have to dissect this man because I think Sergeant Pachiti's killed him here. He looks like he's been dissected. As he's Rules going Boss. for a count out. Can Rules Boss get back in? 
Count of nine. He knows the rules. Oh, he's got no choice but to get back in. But look, he's waiting right there. It's Pachiti in the big right hand. The question is, do you stay on the ground and take the take the L or get back in the ring and take a different oh, type of L? Oh, an Alabama slam. Deep in the oh, heart of Alabama. Oh, my goodness. Tom Campbell, when was the last time you saw someone win with an Alabama slam? I think it was probably Hardcore Holly at a house show in 1999. Wow. Or as we say in the South, the, an Alabama slam. <laughs> Or as they say in Alabama, an us slam. Yes, they do. I've heard it. Were Those you there? The counter. Yes. Were you at that meeting too? I, I may well have been. Oh, again, the combination offense. Sergeant Pachiti has no answer for that. Rules boss with those Lennox oh. Lewis-esque strikes. He's got a submission in oh, and look how fast there. that is. Sergeant Pachiti needs to, needs to stay away from the submission offense of Rules boss. He knows how it works. Rumour has it that in preparation for this match, Rules Boss played Barbie hair and makeup challenge and refused to trim the nails. And that adds to the, the effort and the energy of that face, that face wash. Yeah, we did see lots of scratching and clawing earlier in the match. No water in the pool. It's a bad miss. And a couple of boots to the face of Pachiti there. I'd like to point out at this stage in the match, we've seen 11 falls. Five of them for Rules Boss. Rules Boss got one count out. The rest have all been submission. Not a single pinfall for Rules Boss. It's been a, a night of tap outs for Rules Boss, who uh, wearing down Sergeant Pachiti, and you can see the damage it's taken. Mm. Great strat. I mean, you, this was a strategy that, if I remember, about 10 minutes ago, you predicted. Well, I, what can I say? I've had a lot of dealings with Rules Boss. I know what a stick there he is for the rules. I know that. Size-wise, there's a real disadvantage for him here. And for him to hit the offense, he needs... Oh, blimey, what's this? For him to hit the offense, he needs to get a pinfall. I just don't think it's possible. And another power slam. Sergeant Pachiti keeps on going to that particular move. It's effective. Given that Rules Boss is a technique monster, and we've seen him counter so much of Sergeant Pachiti's offense, there's two moves he just hasn't had an answer for. One of them is that big boot to the face. And one of them is that move we just saw where he hoisted him up. But look, he's got another, su another submission oh. in and that's it. Easy peasy. Burying the fingernails deep into the face of Sergeant Pachiti. That oh. drill, that particular drill is done. Oh, Sergeant Pachiti getting out of the way dead quick and oh. oh. That's a bad miss. That is a bad miss, unless he was looking to RKO the air. Or legs. Or legs, maybe. That's where you would traditionally grab what would normally be a head on a person. Was that a legs running that maybe we saw there? Possibly. Oh, we oh. didn't see. There it is again, as you say. Whoa! Rules Ooh. boss popping back up! But he is exhausted. I think he's going to go for a walk. This is, this is very sound strategy from rules boss. He's Play, gonna take a second. Playing the rules game perfectly is Rules Boss representing Triple Jump as we are well over halfway into the Iron Man match between Sergeant Pachiti and Triple Jump's Rules Boss. The battle of the bosses. Which boss is the best boss? Breaking the rules uh, and making the rules. This move again. Oh, and it, still no answer from Rules Boss. He has not studied well enough, it seems. If only he'd picked the phone up maybe five seconds earlier. Oh, and now Sergeant Pachiti squeezing the life out of Rules, Rules boss. boss. A taste of his own medicine, and Rules Boss has to tap. Insult to injury. The abdomen of Rules Boss going a horrible color. We talk about that, the hat of Rules Boss staying on through this titanic encounter. Let's talk about the sunglasses of Sergeant Pachiti. There is some phenomenal headwear here that uh, is two. locked tight. You see them talking trash to each other there in the middle of the ring. All of a sudden, this one breaks down and it oh. just becomes a war of words once again. The mind games played late in the day here. And you know what? This is not looking particularly good for Rules Boss as he takes a break in the corner. Both of them. Oh. Just take it a minute. Some mutual respect, perhaps. Or maybe they both just really need a wee. They both need a wee by the looks of it. Oh. Blimey. And we are now officially, shots. Ben Potter, into the final third of this 30-minute Iron Man match. And Rules Boss is at six decisions. Sergeant Pachiti is at eight. What has Rules Boss got to do to, to pull back on this one? Well, I think he's got to stay the course, quite frankly. He needs to lock in as many submissions as he can. That's a guaranteed fall for Rules Boss, as he has proven so far. And if Pachiti needs to stay on top of this, he's got to keep the limbs away from... I mean... What's happening here? Oh! Well, they were having a little standoff there. 
Oh, blimey. How's he ever going to walk straight again after that? His entire crotch region caught on the muscular shoulders of Sergeant Pachiti. Sergeant Pachiti hitting the private parts of Rule's boss. Oh, and then a huge clothesline. Lariato, Lariat no for Rule's boss as he's down on the ground once again. And then maybe that big boot, perhaps. He's thinking about doing something. Sends him into the ropes and another huge clothes. Just playing with his food at this point, really. This is just a drill. This is a, this is just a morning drill for Sergeant Pachiti right now. Hang on, where's he going? This is this is not a no DQ match. He cannot use weaponry in here. Oh, look at the the face of Sergeant Pachiti pulling out that weapon. He was a, almost had a flashback there. He had a Vietnam flashback there. He played a lot of 2K23 when he was over there. Yeah, he did. He certainly did. And Sergeant oh. Pachiti. And Rules really wants boss to put him outside. through that table, doesn't he? So far, that table has stayed, unlike the rules, unbroken. Oh. And look at this! Oh, locked in. A, I don't think that's going to count. I think Rules Boss just did it to show that he could. If Rules Boss knows the rules like he says he does, he should know that submission doesn't count on the outside. That's either a rare miscalculation for Rules Boss where he doesn't know the rules or a real genius bit of strategy because he's building his confidence back up. He's proving that he can still do this despite the battering he's taking. He's run away. It looked like Pachiti was setting up for something there, but he's run away from it, and that's fair enough. I would do the same. Sometimes running away is the most brave, is the bravest thing you can ever do. Absolutely. Escape is the finest. Oh, form and here of we valor. go. And he's back on the boards. Oh, and look at that. And you maybe you were right. Maybe that move on the on the outside was was to, to wear down and tear down and then get in the ring and bear down. Just lock it in again inside the ring. We've seen Pachiti do that a few times. Go for a pin and then go for another pin quickly to get a couple of couple of falls. Lovely German oh. suplex. Rules boss missing with the splash. Sergeant Pachiti, what's he locking in here? He's just going to throw him to the outside. I really think he wants to put him through that desk, Tom. Oh, but a counter from Rules Boss. Rules Boss now back in there. Oh, the superior reach of Sergeant Pachiti. It took Rules Boss so long to get back in the ring. He missed out on that advantage there. It's one thing that we haven't considered is the, the height and wingspan advantage of Sergeant Pachiti over mm. Rules Boss. You saw it perfectly just then. Rules Boss taking a swing, but Sergeant Pachiti, what's he got? What's he going for here? Torture rack into oh, a power bomb. Oh, blimey. Red, white, and blue thunder from Sarge. What's he going for now? All he'd have to do is pin rules, boss. Oh, and a counter. Great last minute ditch attempt to fight back into this from rules, boss. I think rules, boss might be hitting one. Of oh, pile driver. He hits one of his signature maneuvers. Could this be? I think he's going to go for it. I think he's going to go for an actual. No. Yeah, he's going for his finisher. That anaconda vice. Oh, and, and immediate. Works. That was a really quick tap out. And look at that, Ben Potter, just like that. We're back and look. And he's going for another submission straight away. This is this is brilliant. Amazing strategy by Rules Boss. Sergeant Pachiti can't go anywhere, and Rules Boss is in the lead with six minutes to go. He has Pachiti trapped in his own personal oh. foxhole now. Can Rules Boss find an answer for this move? No, he's still not been able to do it. Just like that, Sergeant Pachiti jumps out of the trenches and takes another victory. Blimey. You see at this point as well, the Rules Boss is just not even attempting to kick out. Oh, he's going for it again. Can Rules Boss answer this? Oh, he's done it. He's actually answered back. He's finally found a way. Rules Boss, last minute ditch attempt. Can he use this to his advantage though? We've got five and a half minutes left. Sergeant Pachiti though, one step ahead. It's level pegging, nine of nine decisions apiece with Ooh. just under five and a half minutes to go. It has been a war for the ages, a war of attrition. And here he goes again. Oh, look at the flexing from Sergeant Pachiti. The arrogance of Sergeant Pachiti there on show. <sighs> Dumping rules boss to the ground. And now where's Sergeant Pachiti going? Well, he knows this is no DQ. He knows this isn't no DQ, sorry. He can't be using any weaponry. Well, he's got the stairs, he's put them down. Well, Sergeant Pachiti making a general fool of himself here. If he tries to use a weapon, he's going to get disqualified. And there's rules, boss. Of course, served under general fool. Oh, nearly taking out the referee. And that would have been the perfect opportunity for Sergeant Pachiti to attack while the ref was down, but no such luck. And beautiful maneuver from rules, boss.
Incredible counter to whatever Pachiti was planning there and there. That steel chair being removed by the official, placed there by Sergeant Pachiti. Referee getting in the middle of these two. I wouldn't want to get in there. Oh, that's a, that seems to be a significant... Could this be the first pinfall the rules boss earns? It is. And he's done it. Wow. Opportunity was on the phone and eventually rules boss answered. Oh, and the two now go counter for counter. But here's the thing. This is still anybody's game, Ben Potter. Oh. With, with one pinfall between it, if Pachiti can launch that big boot into the face of rules boss. Oh, look at this. Getting a pinfall off a move like that is probably not what Sergeant Pachiti wanted to do going into this match, but he'll take it at this point. At this point in time, these two are worn down to the core. Oh, the knee getting there just before the big fist to the groin, which is where it was going. They are now not only fighting oh, themselves. Oh, he ducks under the big boot as well. He found an answer for the boot. And rules, oh, boss. But it looks like Sergeant Pachiti is... No, he's, he's fighting. At, these two are going back and forth. They know what's on the line. Big money, presumably. How much money do you reckon? Uh, At least 10? A big amount of it. At least 10 pounds, it I It says here on my paper, big money. Oh, that would be 10 pounds. That's the biggest money I know. Oh, Sergeant Pachiti with that, what's with he that kendo stick. Oh, oh no! Rules, it went right through his hat. The Not no! that time. Not that time. And a, and a fool is just awarded to Rules Boss. Why on earth did Sergeant Pachiti do that? Oh, you know what? This. Well, I thought this could have been a great strategy if he picked up a pinfall oh, off the back of it. Oh, look at that jumping. What was that? Stomp? Uh, well, that was a rules boss rough rider. Oh, that's what it's called. The rough rider executed perfectly by rules boss. Rules boss has just got to stay out of Sergeant Pachiti's way for two and a half minutes. Lots of counters from rules boss. He Phenomenal. knows he's so close now. Oh, and Pachiti knew that bear hug was coming. That other submission. No, he's not going to get a pinfall off that, is he? He flipping well is. Unbelievable. Is. These two are exhausted. They're not just fighting against themselves. They're fighting against their own bodies. The lactic acid that is burning through. Oh. Rules boss and Pachiti now could drown a small kitten. I know it's hard to imagine it's such a big amount of money, but what would you do if you had £10, Tom? Uh, do you know what? I think it'd be straight to Woolworths. Oh! And the, uh, flew and down on a zip line there. Well, I was going to say pick and mix are, but apparently this match is more important. Sorry, Tom. No, it's I fine. I do care. Not bothered anymore. Ten pounds. Sergeant Pachiti back in the ring. Ooh, counter from Rules Boss. How's Rules Boss going to answer? Going What's low. He going for here. This looks like maybe another significant maneuver. It is. It's another power driver. Right what? onto the uncrowned head of Pachiti. Oh, the big feet under the ropes again hoisted by the rules so he goes for a different tactic this time it's a submission he's got the leg and the uh, it's another rope break it's that, that is ridiculously long a leg of Sergeant Pachiti once again. again again I'd buy a boat you didn't ask me but I'd buy a boat a boat for £10 yeah I would I, that's a big boat Pachiti going for this one. Oh, oh rules boss <laughs> has got that move scouted now rules boss sinking Sergeant Pachiti there like he was Ben Potter's £10 boat oh another submission as Rules Boss says, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me 12 more times, I'll eventually learn how to do it. And he's done it! He's, he is one up with an entire minute left to go, and Rules Boss just go, <laughs> just running away. Goodbye, this is Rules Boss. Ooh. He's making a run for it, and Pachiti says no! He's going to make him pay, but Pachiti can't get a fool out here. And he, that's a last ride outside. He's got to get He's got to get Rules Boss back in the ring. Oh, and there's the kick as well. 40 seconds to go and Rules Boss clutching onto victory here. Oh, this is elementary. If Pachiti's able to pin here, then he's won it. But he's going high risk. He can't afford, he's got 30 seconds. He just needs to level things for a draw. Rules Boss rolls out of the way. How's he gonna? Oh, the eye rake. 20 seconds. And a counter. We are countering back and forth with 15 seconds left to go. Pachiti just needs to match, Tom. If Pachiti can get one pinfall, this goes to a tie. And oh. Rules Boss says no. no. The submission's locked in. He wants to win properly. And he's done it with one second left. Blimey. What a contest. <sighs> Need to lie down now after that. Rules, boss, rules here at War Games.
two up on Sergeant Pachiti. What an encounter. Take nothing away from him. In oh, he's not done either. Referee trying to get in the way, though. What's Rules Boss doing? This is... Oh, come on! I feel like Rules Boss maybe didn't get to hit enough of the offense that he wanted to, so he's going to go for one more. Well, I don't begrudge him this. Well, this isn't the Rules Boss we know! He's got boat money now. Rules Boss putting the putting the beating one more time on Sergeant Pachiti. We're going to head backstage, where we're hearing from Andrew Hodkinson and Fraser Porter from Cultaholic. Ah, uh, look at us set. We might have had our differences in the past, but who'd have thought a thrown together tag team of the arrogance of youth and an anxious millennial farm boy would make it this far, would make it to challenge him. Tag Team Gold. Well, everybody, this is a message for all of you in the back because there's no force more unstoppable than a man who has no fear making a telephone call and a man who pours over every single minute detail with the fear of being rejected and looking stupid. But I'm not too sure why you've brought us to a, a, a barber's a we've barber got this. Shop. We've got this tag team title match. Ooh. We've got this. Oh my goodness, the and, betrayal! And you're looking to try to I escape! I to tag with you for the tag team title match. You! I will see you out in the ring for a last man standing match right now. If you can stand. Oh, and by the way... What?! That's my boy! <sighs> last man standing! I always knew he'd come through. He may moonlight for Cultaholic, but he's a triple jump boy at the end of the day. A cross bigger than the eyes. Yep. There he is, Fraser Porter. The boos ringing out in the stadium, but I think he did a very, uh, a very good thing just now. He has the option, we didn't even mention last match. Three nil. That's a, that's a, this is a bad, bad day so far for Cultaholic. Not only 3-0 down on War Games presented by WWE 2K23, but Fraser Porter jumping sides, swapping office space. Yeah. Saying goodbye to the slams and hello to the SIM cards. You may see him on your shorts, right? On the Cultaholic channel. He ain't on channel. my shorts anymore. Well, he is, like it or not. But you want to know who schedules at least two posts a week on Triple Jump? Fraser does. Fraser Porter! He's our boy. He's been a double agent all this time? Yes, he has. Disgusting. You're so proud of that. I am. That's disgraceful behavior. I'm just glad to see him jump out of the shadows and take what's his. Well, be it as it may, Fraser Porter stepping in there, now part of Team Triple Jump. And here's a man seeking vengeance. representing the editing world order. But tonight it's all about redemption. Well, here's Andrew, my God, Andrew Janetti, rather. Andy Janetti. Andy Janetti. You can see the glasses have been hastily repaired. There's a wound to the left eye inflicted by his former tag team partner. How does it feel, do you think, coming out for a match immediately after being betrayed like that? Oh, it's just disgusting. Like, you can see on his face there. This is not the Andy Janetti that we've come to know and love. This is not the, the, the anxious millennial party animal, Andy Janetti, that we've come to take as one of our own. This is somebody who has been deeply affected by what's just happened, and he's got revenge on his mind against his tag team partner. Understandably furious, these two will now compete in a last man standing match where to win, the opponent must stay down for a count of 10. So serious damage about to be inflicted upon these two men. I wish them the best of luck. Well, I, I'm, I must admit, I'm pulling for Andy Janetti on this one. I think the uh, the actions of his former tag team partner, quite frankly, reprehensible. We just need Fraser to pull a victory here and triple jumps won the series. Look at the state of that eye. Andy's is bad as well. Fraser Porter, Andy Janetti. Oh. 
massive DDT to get things underway from Andy. So last man standing. This is how it goes. It's no pinfalls, no submissions, no count outs, no disqualification. You beat your opponent senseless until they cannot answer the referee's 10 count. Absolutely. Oh. And right now, Andy Giannetti looking to put away Fraser Porter quickly. Wow. And look at the offense of Andy as well. So acrobatic. Real size disadvantage, though, for him. And this is why I love Andy Giannetti as well. You know the backstory of Andy Giannetti. There was a point where you threw down bags of money, at least 11 pounds. Now you're getting get crazy. get Andy Giannetti on your side. That hasn't been lost on us. We're aware of that. Mm. But Andy Giannetti chose Cultaholic. Yeah. Fraser Porter took the money and ran like a dirty coward. Well, he can buy two boats now, so... I, I know. I, I'm just jealous, probably. Who, who's going to be laughing? Well, I, I imagine the boat salesman. On his boat. Yeah, well, did that Selling too. two boats in one day, that's probably really good for his overheads. I imagine it is. I'm delighted for him. I would expect him to get a rather large commission on that too. Good on him. Andy Giannetti getting elbowed in the head by Fraser Porter, the heartburn kid looking to take advantage of a battered Mars bar at the end of this one. Ooh. Probably uh, go to Centre Parks, I'd have thought. With that oh, what? Do you know, for £11? Pounds. Yeah. And you get, get some change from that as well. Yeah, wow. By another boat. Andy Ginetti and Fraser Porter opposite sides of the ring. How fitting that they'll now spend their lives on opposite sides of the office as well. Beautiful symmetry, these two as well. Fetching a weapon. Oh, oh and it's Andy that swings first! And down goes Fraser. Keys, keys indeed! Counter from Fraser on the outside. The confidence, the oh. arrogance of youth that is Fraser Porter wailing away on the already injured Andy Giannetti. Fraser needs to use his significant strength advantage here, really, I think, if he's going to get the upper hand. Because if he gives Andy any space at all, he's going to be flip-flopping all over the place. And that, and we've seen Andy Giannetti picking up some top speed in, in previous encounters when these two were a hot tag team across the UK wrestling leagues. Yes. Not anymore! No! Small money now. Small money, big, big intentions there for Andy Giannetti with that DDT. And look at this, the announce table once again faces destruction. Oh, a little neck breaker action there from Fraser to Andy. Lifts him to his feet slowly. Sends him back into the ring. Elects not to go for the desk just yet. Teasing us. Andy J just getting out of the way. War games, triple jump, cultaholic. Battle for the age is still to come in our main event. Jumperium taking on Cult U. And as we know from that earlier beating, the Samdertaker takes on Brian Bumpus and Dick Mychenko. Oh, the X-Plex. And that will come at the conclusion of this last man standing match. Out of the ring goes Fraser Porter. Now, oh, excellent maneuvering. Oh, and here we start to see the referee making the count to 10. My God, beautiful maneuver. Was that a moonsault? That was a, was a shooting, shooting star, star press. press. That was it. From the shooting star that is Andy Giannetti. Yes. That is not something that will become lost to wrestling media. That will be replayed for years to come. Fraser able to get to his feet at the count of four there. This match will continue. Ran straight past the kendo stick, though. He could have taken but a weapon. Do you know what? That shows you the anger and the fire in Andy Giannetti. He mm. could have left Fraser Porter to get counted down there. Good but chose to leap off the top rope and inflict more damage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's been quite back and forth so far, but Fraser's the only person... Oh, oh there that's you go. a bad miss. Fraser's been the only person who's had to answer a referee's count so far. Ironically, oh. the, the, the host of worst shows ever mm. landing the worst plancher ever. That's your boy, that is. That is our boy. That's your boy. I'm proud of him for even attempting it. No buyer's remorse there? No, not at all. Selling out Fraser Porter? No. He'll... Offering him the, the rags and riches of £11? We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We will financially recover from this. Andy Giannetti. Now, once again on the offence here against Fraser Porter... And for Andy, this is, uh, and I, if I were Andy as well, like I've, look, I love the shooting star press outside the ring, mm. but he's got to get it under control oh. here. Standing Spanish fly by Yorkshire's finest. Yorkshire brewing something up here in the corner. Oh, Fraser detecting maybe something was coming and ducking out the way. And just like that, Fraser Porter flattens Andy Giannetti. Oh, and the neck breaker. 
The arrogance of youth is on show here, as are his skills should he come off the top rope. And... No, I think, oh dear, what was that? Behave yourself, oh, poison and runner. Leveled it perfectly. Like the poison that flows through the veins of this former great tag team. Yes. It's a real shame that it had to end this way. But I strongly believe that Fraser will emerge a stronger and more complete competitor because of it. Oh, how are you happy? You, 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 you were saying it's a shame it ended this way. Yeah, of course I am. I can, I can see the triple jump section bouncing. I'm just sad that he had to team with Andy Giannetti at all, you know? Livid, quite frankly. Now Fraser Porter back in the ring and those heavy strikes to the oh. head of Andy Giannetti. He does counter and Fraser again having to answer, but Andy not letting him a second to breathe. He really wants to inflict as much damage as possible and ensure that this 10 count happens all in one go. Out of the ring once again, Fraser Porter sent and now Andy today, one perfect jump, lands to the outside, no count outs in this one. Is he gonna let Fraser Porter stay down? Is that enough? No. no. Just gains his feet at three and we are, we're quite away from home Ooh. yet in this last man standing encounter. That empty announce desk just begging for someone to be chucked through it. And I think Andy Giannetti may have. Oh, I think, I think this might be happening. Gingerly placing his former tag partner onto the table as he rolls into the ring. Oh no, Andy, come on now. I know you two have fallen out. I know this is heartbreaking for you, but you're gonna, no! Oh! Fraser rolling out of the way and Andy just crashing through and then he eats a super kick for good measure. Andy's heart got the better of his spirit there and sent crashing through the announce table. Oh, the, the arrogance, the arrogance of youth on show here. And the taunts just scraping the litter tray litter towards the cat poo that is Andy Giannetti. That's disgusting talk that is, you'll get us demonetized. Fraser, oh, Fraser's not even letting Andy stay down. The sheer arrogance. Throwing him back in, the he wants to do more damage. He does. This isn't the Fraser Porter I know. Oh, but hang on. Andy just with the, with the takedown, dropping Fraser, but Fraser is now back on his feet and counters again. Little stamp in the tummy there. And Fraser Porter all the way up top now. He's gonna maybe be going for. Oh, he drops the elbow right onto the neck, it seems. Into the neck and into the heart of his former tag team partner. Oh, he's still not done. What a miscalculation earlier by Andy, though. He was fully in control and completely messed up that table. Oh, he ducks under the sweet chin music. Oh, and a huge DDT. No one knows that that sweet chin music is coming like Andy Giannetti. These two know each other like the back of their respective hands. He's like a worm when it rains. He feels the percussive beat and he knows to get out of the way. Absolutely. And Except here, worms want to come up to eat food, Tom, and get rained on. And sometimes get grabbed by birds. And most of the time that as well. The worm seems, oh, just when we thought the worm was turning, Fraser Porter charges into the corner. And once again, Fraser oh. back on the move here. Andy just too fast. Oh, look at that kick to the head. Fraser just absorbs it. Back in control now, though. Oh, and Andy again ducking out of the corner. Very good at escaping. The energy in this match, the energy in this room is palpable as this tag team implodes here in the center of the ring. And again with the sort of a wheelbarrow DDT there. Nailed, ex excellently executed by Andy Giannetti. Looking to size up. Oh, and just eats an elbow. And then look at the power of Giannetti here. Oh, the backbreaker. Andy Giannetti's got a hundred different ways he can take out Fraser Porter. You could say he's given nine pitches for how to defeat Fraser Porter in this last man standing match. Oh, look at that court again. In. Right into the midsection. This is not a good look for Peebles most handsome son as Fraser climbs back to his feet now. I just hope that they can be friends after this, you know? Were you kidding? Did you see what happened in the barbershop? I just hope they can put Why it behind Why take Andy them. to a barbershop anyway? That should have been a clue. That's, you know what, that's a pretty good point. But that, I feel like that's on Andy, really, to have worked I mean, out. Admittedly, it might be. 
Fraser Porter back to his feet. There's no way there's friendship recovering from this. Friendship ended with Fraser Porter. Who's now friends with friends. Ben Potter. Ben Potter is my new best friend. Yeah. Oh. And now Fraser back up top. He's had a go at the hamstrings there. And now he's going to go for that elbow again. It looks like he nailed that. Whether you like him or not, it was nailed and executed flush. Oh, he's doing it again. The percussive beat. Warming up the people's it light orchestra. the worms to their feet. Oh, and he gets it that time. Just, just let him. Just, just leave him there, Fraser. Injury to insult to injury. And oh, Andy look Ginetti looks to be out. Litter tray oh, scrape disgusting. again. Disgusting. Disgusting. Cap this is your Ginetti. boy. Are you proud of him? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it's... Somehow, some way, Andy oh, Gennetti back is to his feet. Back up. Oh, oh he's, a little bit of confusion there. He's gonna take. He, he was gonna take the. He was gonna take the loss there. I think. We'll take the take the count down there. Yeah. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, Yorkshire destroyer from Andy Gennetti. What's he doing now? All the way up to the highest oh, point. Oh, beautiful. Nails it around the spine. Crashing down from the top of the moors onto the back of Fraser Porter. It's ironic, considering he's probably a bit spineless after that attack earlier on. Oh, yeah. See, I'm glad you admit that. Well, I just felt like I had to say it, just, just to prove that I'm not biased. Oh, Come on, for, Fraser. For all his faults, Fraser Porter back to his feet and saw that coming. Certainly did. Stamp on the tummy again. And look, just... Flicking. The arrogance of youth. The grains the of absorbent material youth. from the cat's toilet. The stories, that we, the stories that we hear about Fraser Porter's arrogance, I think, are becoming to... There's been a lot of taunting, fall. hasn't there? There's been, a, there's been a lot of that. And oh, oh! Worst plancher ever. It's a bad miss. By Fraser Porter and Andy Gennetti has an opportunity, a window here that he should hopefully climb through. Big elbows from Fraser Porter. How's he going to follow up? Oh, sent smashing into the into the barricade there as the cultaholic and triple jump faithful out in force. Look at them, aren't they beautiful? They oh, looks like Fraser wants to get a bit creative with the offense now. Getting amongst the cultaholic fans, that's dangerous. There he goes. We're Everyone's all involved. Keeping a very respectful distance. Is this is is this Fraser Porter maybe making a run for it? I don't Getting think... Getting some distance from him and him and Andy. He's trapped himself in the corner. He's taking a breather. He has a sledgehammer. He's surrounded by weaponry and Andy making him pay. The ring could not contain this blood rivalry between Andy Gennetti and Fraser Porter. Oh, you can hear that, couldn't you? Oh, right to right the... Right in his peebles. <laughs> right in the peebles for Fraser Porter. The thistle-coated turncoat. Oh, no. I think we know what's coming, Tom. Oh, but a counter from Fraser. Fraser somehow just keeping on, keeping on both of these two. Pushing against their body's natural instinct to stop and give up. They're pushing on through. Uh-oh. Oh, this looks bad news oh, for Andy Oh, got him up. Oh, on the concrete through the table. That may be it for Andy Gennetti. No! Oh, he rolls out of the way of that chair shot, but not that one, and he is busted wide open. A river runs down the face of Andy Gennetti. Oh. He says, no way. Comes to a complete stop in front of that barrier, and now he's in control. The ring could not contain this rivalry. Ben Potter, a blood feud born uh -oh. in the barbershop. Uh-oh, Tom. Turnabout is fair play. Turnabout for the turncoat, you're right. And Andy Gennetti suplex through the table to Fraser Porter. It looks like he may be thinking about heading back to the ring. The damage is done. Oh no, Fraser is back to his feet. What is going to keep these two down? It is the will and the heart of these two oh, keeping them coming as another Yorkshire, Yorkshire destroyer, destroyer is perfectly executed. You cannot measure the heart of Andy Gennetti in feet, inches, pounds or ounces. It is an intangible. And yet you can with Fraser in sterling. Yes, you certainly, as we've discovered, 11 pounds sterling. 11, at least 11 pounds. Oh, at least 11 pounds. Yes. 
you guys have you've made some made some good money this year. Fair I play. think so. Yeah. yeah. Fraser Porter with a clothesline to Andy Janetti. And this Ooh. war has look at the state of the ringside area, Ben Potter. It's an absolute disaster zone out there. I don't know if they're gonna have enough time to clean things up before the next match. I'm gonna have to send Billy Way oh. Wars out with a broom. I wouldn't do that. No. They just spend the whole time singing. <laughs> As Fraser Porter now picks up. Well, here we go. Andy Janetti, no. Andy answering back. Takes him down at the knee, but Fraser is. Why back up? Fraser struggling to get back to his feet here as Andy Giannetti. Two marathon matches back to back. All competitors exhausted, really showing what they're made of here. Up to the feet. Andy Giannetti. Oh! oh! Inzaguri straight to the head. Fraser out the way and caught by Andy. Oh, the power of Andy Giannetti! Oh! Excellently executed. We often talk about his speed game. He has showcased a bit of power, but he's deceptively strong. Under Deceptive. that shirt, he's got a, a 15 pack. A 15 pack? Yes. The power oh. of a 15 pack on show with that lift just a few moments ago, but now Fraser Porter looking to, looking to burst a few of those 15 packs. Fraser looking very tired despite being in control, eats a foot. And now, looks like we've got another wheelbarrow DDT that plants Fraser Porter. Landed it perfectly, and right now, watch for the lights, reach for the stars! Oh! Shooting star press! And that might just be enough! I think the margin for Fraser getting back to his feet here is pretty slim. Stay down, Fraser Porter. Andy Giannetti is three seconds away from scoring the first point for Colton Oh, Hyde. he's and up. Fraser's, how, how, How has he how? done that? Oh, but it looks like we, oh, another Yorkshire destroyer. Yorkshire destroyed. Surely that's enough at this point. And again, Fraser somehow getting to his feet. Andy just prowling. And the high impact offense has not done that's another X-Plex. On the money Ooh. as well, X. X marked the spot, but then that kick hit the spot. Fraser Porter once again calling. Andy to his feet. Here we go, look at that. Just keep those wheelbarrow DDTs a-popping. Fraser needs to find an answer for that move. He so, keeps getting clocked by it. So far, so far no good for your new boy, Fraser oh, Porter. Oh, you say that. And then he so generously feeds Andy Giannetti the sole of his boot. A lightning quick, sweet chin music. Oh, and the crotch chop. And that might. Oh, look at this. That's oh, my boy that's right That's the there. arrogance of youth right oh. there. Oh! Misplaced arrogance of youth. Andy's back up. Oh, and Andy's taking him down with a drop kick. How can Andy follow this up to remain in control? Irish whip into the corner. And that's a counter. These two lads have got to think big in the closing stages of oh. this last man standing match. We have got to be in the final quarter. We're in the deep water. We're finding out who can swim. Just had another call, Tom. Uh, David Seltzer has given this five stars as well. Oh, what a guy. What a back and forth. That, that 12 pounds I gave him, paying immensely. 12 pounds? Paying dividends. Oh, the elbow right onto the sternum and neck area. Just in case my tax accountant is listening, it's 12 pounds over two years. Is that the tax year or? Uh, tax year. Tax year, year to okay. year. As right now, Fraser winding up that boot once again. The sound of the Peebles Light Orchestra ringing in his ears. Is he going to get it? Oh, he's not. And he ducks out of the way. And here comes that wheelbarrow DDT <laughs> planting Fraser. Here comes the boom. He's not done. He's not done, Tom. And Norris Fraser Porter. Oh, back and forth these two go. Oh, look, they went for a counter once again and the legs were grabbed. No. He's not going to surely. No. No, he's not taking that. The, the, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have put it past him at this stage. Hoisting him up. Andy, though, with the counter. Oh. 
Reverse DDT landed by Andy Gennetti. What's Andy thinking here? Is he thinking one big move to put this away? Oh, he's fetching that kendo stick retrieved by Fraser earlier in the match. Some call it a kendo stick. Some call it a Singapore cane. Whatever you call it, it's dangerous in the wrong hands. But Fraser takes it out of the hands of Andy Gennetti. And it oh. goes straight into the face. Picks him straight back up. And what's he going to go for now? Surely that's the biggest move in his arsenal. Is this a miscalculation, Tom? I, I, unless he's thinking some big top rope move, which it looks like he is. One more elbow oh. into the back. Stabbing oh, no, in the but, back. Oh, but Andy's right back to his feet with a leg lariat. And what's he going to follow up with? Kicking low, here oh, we go. Oh, it's an X-Plex. X marks the spot. Oh, and Fraser out the way. And both men are exhausted. Running on adrenaline and fumes and hatred. The holy trinity oh. that makes the late stages of this match. And now one more time maybe before that shooting star. Pre no! Oh! That was a moonsault. That was a moonsault, and what a moonsault. And he's calling it. He thinks he's got this in the bag. Time of death. Whatever time you make it on no. your clock, and no. Oh, Fraser again. This one is just gonna keep on going. I think it is. And got... once oh. again. Yorkshire Destroyer. Any more trips to Yorkshire, you're gonna, it's gonna be worth you buying a yearly pass. And Andy Gennetti. Somehow sees Fraser Porter get back to his feet again. What does Andy have to do to put this one away? Another standing Spanish could fly there. Could be that. It could be that. He's not done though. Lands a sent on. And he's going somewhere. What's he going for? Oh, he's not. What's he thinking about now? Oh, old faithful. This is what a blurred rivalry does, Ben Potter. It makes oh. wild men do wild things. Fraser ducking out of the way initially, and these two are just trading blows at this very late juncture in the match. It could go either way. All the way up top now. Uh-oh. And he's down. Oh, that's a bad miss. Did the chair hit the face of Fraser on the way down too? Uh oh, and there's the DDT again. Perfectly placed chair from Andy Gennetti as well. I think that would have done extra damage. Chair shots raining down on the back of the traitor here. And Andy Gennetti just remembering that first super kick in the barber shop. The anxious millennial party boy waiting to see whether that will be enough to keep Fraser Porter down. He's just sort of prowling around like a caged animal. He's ready for if Fraser stands up, but Fraser seemingly doesn't have... Doesn't have an answer for this at the moment. Oh, oh just about. There he is. Back to his feet again. Barely getting up to his feet. Here comes Cowboy. Oh. Andy Gennetti. Xplex. How much offense? Oh, and just just for fun. Burying that sent on deep into the solar plexus of his former tag partner. Now, what's he thinking? Shooting star for good measure. That has got to be it. From the heavens all the way down to Fraser Porter's private hell. It's devastating. Where he belongs Whoa, for joining hey, you. Come on now. Just I, say I'm sorry. I was, I was just about to say, as devastated as I am, that this doesn't mean that there's a triple jump overall victory right here and right now. I am glad to see that Andy is potentially and gonna Andy's take this one home. Yes, Retribution is a party boy named Andy Gennetti. What a match. First win for Cultaholic and a huge one for Andy Gennetti. Let us go backstage where we are with Ben, Peter and Ashton ahead of War Games in our main event. Escapism, sophistication, excellence. These are the three core tenets of everything we strive for with Jumperium. While you wallow in the shallow pleasures of your sweaty grapples come Tuesdays and uh, 
university spirit. Jumperium travels fantastical video game lands that your primitive brains can't even begin to comprehend. Cult you. Your enthusiasm as a fake is a sport you claim to love so much. One of your students has consistently failed to take his laptop to an Italian restaurant and your former producer moved continents to get away from you. You cannot begin to measure up to our capabilities in the digital plane and if we have to lower ourselves to wrestling you to teach you a lesson then so be it. Because for Jumperium the pad is sacred. Strong words from Jumperium ahead of our main event. The pad is sacred Ben Potter. It most certainly is but we can't talk about that right now because here he comes, the dastardly man who attacked James Jenkins at the start of tonight. The following is a handicap match. Introducing first from Newcastle upon Tyne, England, weighing in at 296 pounds, the Phenom, Sam Turr. Makes me sick, Tom. Earlier on in the night, we saw Sam Detaker wiping out James Jenkins. He was rushed to a local medical facility uh, with numerous injuries, including a broken toenail. Yeah, I yeah. understand he's had to take the entire week off this week. I thought it was weird that the first thing he did was book time off on Time Tastic before calling an ambulance. He actually did it as he lay there, which I thought was sincerely a bit messed up. Yeah, as his superior. There's a lot of questions there, but what we do know is this man has the answer to a lot of questions. Like, is it the end of my time on this planet? The Sam Detaker. You know a man is dangerous when he walks to the ring wearing a hat that he would gladly eat. And you know as well that he is gonna dish out some pain when he's in no rush to get to the ring. Absolutely no rush. He is pondering every single cold-hearted move he will do next. The Shredditor, known as Sam Driver, the Sam to Taker to his enemies. And believe me, he has a lot of enemies, Ben Potter. He certainly does. Do you know a lot about facial tattoos and what they mean? Well, I'm familiar with uh, the word spooky on his chest, which yes. would uh, denote and connote that he's spooky. That's true. He also appears to have a teardrop tattoo next to his eye. Which means he's really sad. Which means he's incredibly sad. And actually, I think they should all just have a hug and maybe go out for a nice spoons tea. That would be a lovely idea. Uh, I don't know whether that is on the cards tonight. That's not the universe we live in, Tom. It is sadly not the universe we live in. There you see the Sam to Taker. Not expecting to compete tonight, as far as we know, but as a result of that earlier attack on James Jenkins, and we wish him well in his future endeavours, he is in action tonight against the two that came to the defence of a wounded James Jenkins. Yes, and we're seeing them right now, these two titans of men. Double duty tonight for these two, Tom. We saw Brian Bumpus and Dick Majchenko forging a friendship and making some new enemies in the Battle Royal earlier on in the night. And as a result of coming to the aid of James Jenkins, as you say, Ben Potter, double duty. Double duty, truth and consequences. Truth, of course, talking about Brian Bumpus there in the corner. He's a newsreader. He tells it how it is. Consequences coming at the hands of Dick Majchenko, the war criminal, stood right there. He commits the crimes. Brian reports them. I think tonight they will both hope to commit some crimes of valor against the Sander Taker. Big uphill battle for the Sander Taker though. Two on one. Of course, only one member of Truth and Consequences can be legal at a time, but even so, there's always a man on the outside who's ready to be tagged in or potentially break up a pinfall if needs be. Having seen what the Shredditor can do, I think this is a this is potentially a, a disadvantage for Brian Bumpus and Dick Majchenko. Oh, you think so? Well, I think that if if the Sam to Taker can keep Brian Bumpus in the match and keep Dick out, mm. I think there's a, there's a chance of a quick and sound victory here. Oh, good luck keeping Dick out. Yeah, keep Dick out. 
Oh, good block there from Look. Brian Bumpus, who is very nippy on his feet. I was really impressed with the, the acumen of Brian Bumpus mm. in the Battle Royal. I wasn't sure what I was expecting, and, and I wasn't sure what I was expecting here, but oh my oh, god! Look at that! Where's Brian Bumpus been trading? I don't know. Read the news, more like read the shoes. Here they come. Bumpus is an incredible athlete here, but right now being taken off his feet. Oh, the power slam from Big Samdertaker. That's all that he needed, the open window from Brian Bumpus. Oh, and that's a kick out. Much stronger competitor, Sam Dutake. It'll be interesting to see when Dick gets into this matchup how these two stack up next to each other. Bumpus been making headlines tonight already, and oh, here's, here's, here's one for the archives. Oh, my goodness. Where's he going, Tom? He's going old school. Oh. Class in session. Leave your chalkboards at the teacher's table. Yes. And if you borrowed an abacus, bring that back as well. Bring it back. We need those. We, yeah, there's not many in the school. And um, funding's low. Th three have gone missing already this week. So if we can sort that, that'd be great. And the good one with the colours on it as well. Oh, I like borrowing that one. Brian Bumpus now taking it to the Samda Taker. Mm. What's he going for here? Oh, looking for reverse DDT. Turned it into a neck breaker with the knee involved as well. Bumpus going up high. And and he jumps back down. That's fair. Oh, but absolutely eats a clothesline there. And Dick screaming for the tag. Um, Dick desperately wants in and Brian Bumpus. Oh. Bumpus really wants to get a hold of Dick here, ideally. Get him in this match. Get Dick in, Brian. You know what? I think that I think he desperately wants a hand in on Dick. Comes Dick. The, Dick is in. Now the question is, is the sound taker going to be able to handle what Dick's bringing. Oh, look at the team mode there already. Brian saying absolutely not, but Dick, massive miscalculation there. That's a bad miss. Teamwork makes the dream work. It didn't so much on that occasion as the Samba Taker gets some distance. Oh. Two big meaty men slapping meat. Dick Majchenko, the author and, uh, and founder of multiple murder books. Yes, including the fire one that goes on fire. Yes, that That's was what it's called. That was my favorite one. It just burned up in my hands. It was that hot and that and prob and probably uh, quite incriminating. Yes. Founder of SEAL Team 6, uh, famously recently attended that sort of tailgate for when everyone was talking about storming Area 51. He did a talk there about well, war things. He just, uh, I, I think it was uh, very much a, uh, an entrepreneurial thing to do to host a talk at Area 51. Yes. During a storming of said area. Brains and brawns. All at the, not necessarily all at the same time. As Pl plural brawn. D D Dick Majchenko flattening the Samdertaker there. And you know, and all jokes oh. aside, Samdertaker has uh, found himself oh, on the receiving end. Brian. The Sam to take is like, what, me? What have I done? But, oh, great distraction tactic by Brian Bumpus. Dick Majchenko making him pay and a counter from the Sam to take, who's right back to his feet. What does the Sam to take have to do here, do you think, to come out on top against two such trying opponents? Well, if I was, if I was the Sam to take, I would be looking to try. And as and this is, this is what I don't want. I don't want to be in there with Dick Majchenko, mm. the man that, mur that famously murdered someone four times. Yes. The same person. He did. They know how you do that, but he did. Check the bodies. That's yeah. what he said. Check the one body that, that he murdered four times. That one is still twitching. That's a quote. That's, that's it. That was, I believe, the title of his fifth book. Big DDT. The Sam Driver, Sam, the Sam Detaker needs to desperately get that tag really needs Dick Machinko to tag Brian Bumpus. Yeah. I think he has a great advantage of taking this one down if Bumpus is in. With the greatest of respect to Brian Bumpus, I think he's the weak link. He's the smaller competitor, that's for sure. We saw that Brian Bumpus very, very capable of some high impact offense. In fact, if we had some sort of vision where we could see the vital signs of these superstars, we might be able to infer that perhaps the Sander Taker is kind of struggling at the moment, although Dick Majchenko is not far behind. Well, like a display that shows you how hurt people are. Some sort of heads up that's, apparatus, yeah. That's, that's, that's the stuff of science fiction. If I were to guess, that's all I'm saying. I've never heard of such such, such a, a wild thought in my entire life. Brian gets another hand oh! on the dick, and here comes Brian Bumpus. And just like, well, Bumpus is burning here. Oh, the elbows to the cranium of the Samda Taker. He's going for a cover, and that's an easy kick out at one. I have been surprised by the headlines Brian Bumpus has been making tonight. Yeah? 
incredible performance in the Battle Royal and oh. excellent performance here. That's a long way you to know. drop down. Strong knees of Brian Bumpus. For a newsreader who's not normally out on the, on the story. He's like, wrestling in a shirt and tie. Yeah. It's only him and Erwin R. Scheister. Yes. And, and my own Calembris. Who? Oh, uh, we don't talk about him. Oh, sorry. Uh, Snapmare by Sam Detaker. Taking down Brian Bumpus. What's Sam Detaker going to do now? That's the question. Takes him down to the mat. Oh, and a leg drop over the... Oh, wow. right back up is Bumpus. The two bounce off each other. Bumpus straight uh -oh. back to his feet. And, uh -oh. and the... Tombstone pile driver into the cover, but look who is waiting. It's exactly what we talked about. Dick Majinko right in there to break it up. It's hard to finish with a big dick on your shoulder. Dick inserts himself in the pin there. Oh, oh. driving dick out. He goes for the cover again. That's another kick out this time at one. See, unfortunately, had Dick Majchenko not got involved earlier, that would have been a three. But Brian Bumpus had time to shake the cobwebs and kick out. He did. But look at these strikes, like these soup bones of the Samda Taker now. I think the Samda Taker now knows that if he wants to stand a chance in securing a pinfall or submission victory here, he needs to take care of Dick on the outside. Just sort him out. Just get Dick, get Dick away. Yes. As quick as he can. And then write the timeline oh, of dear. this match. Oh, a thundering choke slam. And what's the Sam to take going to do? Looks like he's following up with some other offense. Will he bear in mind Dick's position? Sam to take a look into hit render on this match. Oh. Tombstone! Oh, and down goes Dick. But look, Brian straight back to his feet. It looks like After Effects has crashed. Oh, no, here we go. And here comes Sam to, oh, Sam to take a throw to cross. Oh, oh, wow! Into a super kick. And now it looks like Brian's setting up for something Those here. Size 7 Adidas casuals oh, right into the head. Blimey, and a march to legs perhaps from earlier in the night. Wow, the thigh-high driver. Oh, that's it. Nailed from legs. Shades of legs. Both of them. Knee to the face of Sam to take And into the cover. Oh, Sam to take her out at two. Out of the ring goes to Sam to take her, takes a little respite, and Brian Bumpus says, no rest for you. Cut back from the commercial break. Oh, look where he was going for a coup de grace, but a not very, quite. A very anti-commercial break with those legs. Oh, just walks into several strikes by the Sam to take her and then thrown into the barricade. Uh, how casual is the referee going to be if the Sam to take her pulls out this kendo oh. stick? Across the spine of Bumpus. Bumpus looking to piss out of his bum after those strikes. He may well do. Those strikes were certainly to his bum. Oh, and now a seal chair. chair, not across the bum as well. Oh, oh no. the bum! No! The cosmic booty and of again. Brian Bumpus! This just in, chair. More at 11 as Brian Bumpus. Oh. Dropped onto his back. Gut wrench. We just understand that the news team have ordered a special cushion for Brian oh. Bumpus when he returns to work. Into a triangle is this Hell's Gate. Hell's what does the Santa Taker call it? Oh, he taps out, but he's outside the ring. That's not going to count. No submissions outside the ring in a handicap match, but Brian Bumpus may be done Big in thank this you to, encounter. to Kevin for just turning on the spotlight there. Cheers, Kev. A little while after we needed it, but cheers. And now he's turned it off. Thank you, Kevin. In comes. Oh! We saw the Sander take a takeout dick on the outside. He wants to keep his Into dick away from this match. This could be it. Clothesline. This could be it. Does Off the it? clothesline. Sander take with a victory. 3-2 triple jump. What a win for the Sander Taker. Brian Bumpus and Dick Majchenko looking for revenge. They will not find it at the feet of the Sander Taker. Let's head backstage where Ross, Matthew and Jack are ready for war games. Let's check into the school of Cult U. Cult U! Yeah! Yeah! That's right.
Boy, ah. the three Game Boys. Oh, my advance. Oh, yes. I'm the holic. I take it on. Those three fake gaming lads. Come on, girl. At the war games. What do you think about that, Ross? They think they're masters of the snares. Well, I reckon they're just masters of smeg. Oh! The cheesy oh! Oh! What do you think about that, Jack? We're going to Xbox 360 your ears oh! in. Ah, you'll see, you'll see. That hurt in real life. Oh, wait, wait, there's something else for us. I'm too, Matthew. Thank you for passing to us. I reckon they like Nintendo, but the only thing they'll be saying is Nintendo. Oh! We're lost to cult. You! Like the live in Dracula's castle, the three of you are gunned down for the count. Call you! Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Let the war games begin! Wow, these two teams are fired up. separate cages, with one member of each team starting the match. At regular intervals, alternating members from each team will be released to enter the match. The team with the advantage will be the first to have a member released into the match. Once all competitors have entered, War Games officially begins. The match could be won by pinfall or submission, exiting the cage will result in a forfeit. Now, let the war It all comes down to this, Ben Potter. Cultaholic versus Triple Jump, your main event of the evening. Jumperium, call you! Remember that Jumperium does have the advantage here. It absolutely does. They have grafted, have Triple Jump all throughout tonight. And the grafters get ready to enter the ring. There's your boys, Ben. There they are. You see Ashton Matthews at the front wearing the iconic red coat and flanked there by Peter Austin and Ben Potter in their matching track suits. Class in session, Colt U make their way towards the War Games cage. Ross Tweddle, Jack the Jobber, and the King of Botchstar, Matthew Gregg. I took a, an evening class at Colt U. How did it work out for you? Uh, it was all right, but they sent me, you know when you're meant to get a certificate at the end to show that you've completed the course? It was on sort of like a napkin. Right. And just said, you have done it, but it was spelled U, like the letter U, like, and it were U with several U's. You have done it. Well, they've upgraded since then. Have they? Yeah, that's good to hear. I've got matching outfits now. Matthew, Greg, and Ashton starting things off. The MILF hunter looking to hunt the king of botch style inside that double-decker, double-whammy cage. I know we heard the rules earlier on, but would you care to explain how this is going to work, particularly with Jumperium having the advantage? Hello, this is Rules Boss. So every set amount of time, we will have another entrance into these two wrestling rings. And what will happen is the match will continue until every, every single person has entered the match. And then it'll be pinfall or submission. Meanwhile, Ashton! What is the MILF hunter doing up there? There's no, I can't see any MILFs, There's Can no you? MILFs up there Maybe she's just getting a vantage point to find more MILFs. All the way up to... Oh, that's a bad miss! Crossbody did not connect, and here comes Matthew Gregg! Oh, but the counter from the MILF Hunter. The botch botches as the MILF Hunter fights through now. Oh, blimey. As, as, as a result of the Battle Royal in our opening match, it is advantage to triple jump, so the next entrant in six seconds' time will be for triple jump. It will. You can see Peter Austin is about to make his way down to the ring. And here he comes, which means that for this entire initial period, before the match even starts, mind, Jumperium will have the man advantage. There will be an extra person for Jumperium pretty much throughout. Absolutely. And Matthew Gregg is an island unto himself. Oh, Ripcord elbow. Look at that. And this is just like, like picking at their food for Jumperium at this point. Absolutely having their way with Matthew here. 
as both members of Jumperium in this match make their way to the second ring. Peter Austin now with a standing shooting star press. That's exactly what it is. Yes. As Ashton continues to put the beating on Matthew oh. and Greg. This will not be a Hall of Fame moment for the King of Botch Style. But looking to make some of the video game news in the Triple Jump podcast this week. Oh dear. Despite the two on one advantage, Matthew making these two look a bit foolish at the moment. Well, there he are. they are in the wrestling ring. They sell though Jumperium say the pad is sacred. You've got to believe if anyone knows how to screw up in a wrestling match, it's Matthew Gregg. Well, Matthew won't be on his own for long. It's yeah. only a matter of time before one of his esteemed colleagues at the university join him. And who's it going to be? Four seconds away from Matthew oh. Gregg getting some help and a moonsault went nowhere. Oh, and here we go. A WTF moment about to be made in this match. It's Ross Tweddle. Arguably the most powerful member of Colt U. Making his way to the ring now. I believe he will be bringing some weaponry. You can see him reaching under that, that ring there. What's he tossing in? That's a chair. Rossi Drip Drip bringing the weaponry. Here comes Rossi Drip Drip. He's got one goal. That is to kill, kill, kill. And Peter Austin is the first victim. Ooh, not quite. Oh, but he gets him that time. Absolutely nails him. Support for Matthew Gregg. Oh, oh and Peter Austin. Tiny Peter. Take it out, Ross Tweddle there. Where's Peter going? Look at the acrobatics on show here from these two. That's the first move that's connected out of the acrobatics, but it's still impressive anyway. As we saw from when Triple Jump looked to prove it with wrestling, Peter Austin has quite the secret wrestling acumen. Yeah, absolutely. He was very good at running the ropes, and he also did a great suplex. He did a fantastic suplex. Uh, some would argue Ashton did an excellent oh. suplex that nearly killed Northeast wrestling legend H.T. Drake. She certainly did. The Milf Hunter is arguably the most proficient and deadly member of Jumperium, which is why she gets to wear the red coat. Makes perfect sense. Red coats rule. Yes. WWE 2K23 proudly presenting Coltaholic versus Triple Jump. And Triple Jump about to get the advantage once more. Here comes Ben Potter. Will he grab weapons as well? It's a prime opportunity to do so, and he is going to do it. As you can see on the right in the second ring, Dare Milf Hunter, Ashton, taking it to the leader of Colt U, Matthew. And Ross and Peter still going back and forth in the left, the left ring there. A table's made its way in. Where is Ashton going now? Oh, it's Ashton all the way back up top as Ben Potter brings in a table. Ashton! Oh, my God. She doesn't miss that time. Off the top of the very tippity top of the cages. And then stamping on the back, Ben hitting Ross with a table. Another table set up in the corner. What's going to happen now? Oh, the oh! low or an uppercut if you're going to be European about it. Ross Tweddle. Just, just collapsing the genital region of Ben Potter. There's nothing left. It's just dust. And there we go with the, the emerald oh. fusion from Ross Tweddle. Ross is taking it to he the really founding fathers is. of Triple Jump. He certainly is. And bear in mind that with both members of Cult U, in control of the moment. Hang on. A flatliner through the table. Well, now he's dead. He's just dead. WTF moments him. out the wazoo from Ross Tweddle. We're just about to get the final member of Colt U in this match, and then the match will officially be underway, and the action will be sincerely chaotic. Here comes the man who I think by this late arrival becomes the wrestler of the week. Jack the Jobber enters the War Games cage. And once he enters, this match officially begins. It does. He's taking his time, though. It looks like he's grabbed a sledgehammer. Is that all he wants? No, he's going back. He's going to throw in more things. Absolute more carnage. As much carnage as possible. Another table. Why not? On the other side of the ring, you've got Matthew and Ashton putting on a five-star match. Just a clinic in there all on their own while our attention's divided to the left side of the ring. We're looking at the destruction on the left, but not the artwork on the oh, right. Oh, DDT from Ashton Matthews planting Math. Ashton, Ashton Matthews planting Matthew. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Oh. And the match has begun, Tom. 
Oh, straight in with a pinfall attempt. You've got to admire it. Oh, kick out of one, though. The anticipation building like that Italian restaurant waiting for Jack and his laptop. The War Games match officially underway. Unlike that, though, Tom, this will have a conclusion. Hey, exactly. Ashton and Matthew on the right-hand side. They ring all of their own. Where they are absolutely putting on a is clinic. Peter going. He's decided better of it. He's climbing back down. Peter's changed his mind about doing the War Games thing. He's going to head off and work on an edit for a ranked list. Matthew countering Ashton on the right there. Sends Ashton into the ropes. Ashton's back off the ropes. They, they bonk heads. And, the and now Ben's in there too. Ben Potter making the save for Ashton there. And Ashton, Ashton addicted to the high Just of the top of that cage. Scouting out the MILFs. <laughs> scouting out the, the MILFs. the best vantage point in the arena. Jack's now set foot on the right-hand side. You see Ross going for a pin on, but he lets Peter go. What's he hoping to accomplish here? Oh, Jack was looking confident very briefly oh. there. Taken down with a TKO. And look at Ashton with the sledgehammer. Oh my God. And Matthew's just locked Ben into a submission, but Ben out of there pretty quickly, it seems. Ben's still pretty fresh in this War Games match and Ashton, Matthew wasn't letting go. No. Can't be disqualified in this match though. Ben going for a quick, quick cover. Oh, it's broken up by Jack throwing Ashton at Matthew. Using using Ashton as a projectile there. Tiny Peter now looking What's for something looking big. For? Oh, planting him. Oh, oh. Look, at, look at that. Have you ever seen anything like that? Jack the Jobber through the air. Unbelievable. Ben breaking up that pinfall. But what's, that? what's Matthew Wait, doing? Ma Matthew appears to have planted Ashton on the floor. Oh, and a kick out by Ashton. High octane energy, Jumperium, and Colt U in our main event of War Games. Matthew going up top. Oh, is that sliced bread? Sliced bread from known wheat allergy enthusiast Matthew Gregg. Oh, looks like Ross is about to go through a table. He's gone through. And oh, Matthew absolutely smacking Ashton with a super kick and into the cover. This could be it. And that's it! And Cole, you take Jumperium to school! That is a three-way tie between the two teams. Ashton Matthews completely separated from the rest of her team members there at the end. Great strategy. What a match we've just seen. What a night. Cultaholic versus Triple Jump. War Games has been. Thank you for joining us. My name's been Tom Campbell. His name will always be Ben Potter. And we'll see you on the next one. Love you, bye.